Hey guys, how's it going? This is Steve with All Dogs Off-Road and today we have the Shop GX here ready to get some upgrades. We're taking off Old Man Emu rear springs and Eibach shocks and we're throwing on some Radflow coilovers and shocks with our All Dogs Off-Road rear coil springs. It's gonna look really, really, really nice. Should be a big performance upgrade for this, uh, for the GX. So stay tuned and hope you like the video. Big pile of parts here. You excited, Chad? You excited, Huckleberry? I'll take that as a yes. All right. So we do have a little bit of a lift on the on the GX already, but. It's going to be a big performance upgrade with the rad flows and we're getting a little bit of sag out of the old man emu coil springs so our all dogs off road coils should uh should solve that problem and uh, we're going to be sitting very pretty also throwing on spc upper control arms to get rid of the oem upper control arms we have on here and we're shooting for about two to two and a quarter inches of lift in the front and about two inches of lift in the rear we are thrown on SPC upper control arms because we did get the extended travel front rad flows, but we aren't going for a lot of lift. We're going for, you know, more travel oriented. So as you can probably see, the GX has suffered from a lean in the rear for quite some time now. We actually have a lean spacer in the rear left coil and we're still experiencing some lean. So hopefully we will solve that problem today and we'll be looking nice and level when we're all finished. So a little bit more info on the parts that are going onto the GX today. We have our All Dogs Off-Road rear coil springs. They're made in America, high quality steel. They ride really well and they're available in light, medium and heavy duty load cam capacities. In this instance, we're gonna go with the lights on Chad's GX because we're not looking for too, too much lift and we want it to ride really well. So that's what we're gonna go for. He doesn't have any extra weight on the truck that would call for a medium or heavy duty load spring. But you know, if you're the type of person who has drawers, rooftop tents, skids, sliders, and all that stuff, the medium or the, or the heavy spring would be, would be the right decision for you. And for the front, we have Radflow Extended Travel 2.0 coilovers with a 600 pound spring, since we don't have any extra weight on the GX, 600 is just fine. These are probably gonna be set for about two and a half inches of lift, so we may need to take them down a little bit to get the lift numbers that we're after. But thanks to them being a fully threaded shock body, they're completely adjustable with our included spanner wrench. So getting them into spec should be no problem at all. And because they are extended travel, we also have our SPC upper control arms. These are adjustable and will be great for getting the alignment that we need as well as the clearance needed to uh, uh, to fit these massive shocks. And because the GX is relatively heavy, we're going with a 7 8 inch shaft on both of the shocks, which will be just perfect for it. We're really, really excited to get this build underway. So hope you enjoy the video and let's do this. Out it comes. There you go. Kind of cute. Yep. All right. So let's talking about what we're taking off and what we're putting on, and what the differences are. So here, this is an iBox shock with our prototype Old Dogs Off-Road coil springs. And there's a couple differences. The primary difference is gonna be that these rad flows, as you can see, are gonna be a little bit longer. They have more travel, they're rebuildable, and they have linear valving. All of these, all of these factors are going to all add to on and off-road performance for the GX. All right, upper control arm time. Oh yeah. Getting there. 
All right, Chad, what's our progress so far? So right now, I'm loosening the ABS line so that we don't harm anything. Um, but the arm is loose, the bolt is off, we're gonna have to pop the hood and, and pull the bolt out. Uh, Toyota's from the factory. Rather than like Nissan's, we'll use two bolts for their arms, whereas Toyota uh, uses just one long one. Exactly. Nice. So we've pretty much gotten everything unbuttoned, and honestly, at, at this point, once we pull that bolt out, it's going to be time for the for the new beef. All right, we got the SPC upper control arm all set up. We're aiming for about three degrees of caster, and we are getting ready to. Slap it in. Let's do this. All right, here we are. Everything is all buttoned up. We have our SPC upper control arms, rad flows, top mounts, and bottom mounts are all tightened up. And this side is all done. Time to start the next side. All right, now we're taking a, a look at the rear here. We're gonna be pulling off these rear shocks as well as the old man EMU coils. And we're gonna be replacing them with all dogs off-road coils and our rad flow shocks. So stay tuned for this. All right, guys, we got the, the rear eyebox shocks off. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. You can see the massive difference on, on, the, on the shaft size, 7 eighths versus, this is probably half inch or smaller. And so both two inch shock body diameters. You'll see the travel numbers are similar, um, but the ride flow is gonna be about a quarter inch longer. So really excited to see how the ride is different. Um, honestly, for, for a vehicle that heavy, I really don't think a shaft this size is is enough but we'll show you guys once this is all on very very excited all right we got our old man emu coil springs out and our all dogs off-road coils are going in so you can see the wire diameter is a, a good amount thicker than the old man emu so hopefully we'll be able to get rid of that uh ugly lean that we got going all right and there's the replacement coil spring and now it's rad flow time. All right, guys, here you go. Here's our progress update. We got our rad flow rear shocks mounted down here in the bottom. And we have our all dogs off road coil springs installed there. We don't have these connected up top yet, just so we can have more room to play with the springs and stuff. But once that's done, we're going to drop it down, torque that down. Uh, Chad is working on the other side right now, but once that's done, Time to throw the tires on, confirm our torque specs, and see how she sits. While we were back here, we decided to delete yield sway bar. At this point, we're just uh, tying up some loose ends, and uh, we'll be end, done. The end links on it are bad, so. Yeah, might as well. All right, folks, and there she is, all done. We took her for a test drive, rides just beautifully. I would say we got about two and a quarter inches in the front and probably about two inches in the rear. Could not be happier. It rides like a dream, handles really well. And I think that we got a, the ballpark alignment pretty, pretty close. Next up for this beast is gonna be some 32 or 33 inch tires and uh, it'll be ready for the trails. Heard it. <laughs> Rough. Cut driver. Nice. Crawl up. Nice. Keep coming. All right, you're going to get a bump on your. Uh, keep coming.
straighten out a little bit. Good, keep coming. Great job. Woo, let's go. Oh, easy, easy, Steve. Put it in hybrid mode. All right, good, good, coming, coming. Just oh, Jesus. What do you have, a left wheel locker? You have a left wheel locker or something like that? <laughs> Good, good day, Wheeling. <laughs>